Hello and salam. Welcome to Muslim Viewpoint, a new podcast series powered by American Muslim Today, a groundbreaking nonprofit digital newspaper which champions civic engagement. AMT informs and empowers the diverse voices of almost 30 million Muslims here in the US and other Western countries. I'm Rifat Malik. I am AMT's editor in chief. And today we have an interview with children's book author Jamila Tompkins Bigelow. Jamila is a Philadelphia-based educator who works, whose work centers on young black Muslim protagonists and has been recognized widely and critically praised by many trusted voices in literature, including the American Library Association, School Library Journal, and NPR. She's published four books featuring black Muslim children and, and will be releasing her new book, Salat in Secret, next year in June. Jamila spoke to our reporter, Maya Gaylor, about the inspiration behind her writing and why it's important to give children representation. Um, why is it important for you to write stories that are specifically about uh, Black Muslim children? Um, because it's who I am. Um, you know, it's who my children are. It's my community because they exist. You know, that's really what it is. It's just... Um, other people don't have to think about why it's important to t write stories about people who share their identity. They just write them and they know that it's important that those people be in books. It's just sort of something they take for granted. Um, but um, for me, it's like I almost have to explain it because we're so rarely in stories. It's all, it's it's an odd thing to kind of explain why I need to, like I should be in a book or why people like me should be in a book, right? Um, but it's, it's not, there's not even a, although there's all these different things like self-esteem and things that support kids, but the but our heart is that, well, black Muslim people exist, so they should be in books because they just, they're people in the world, you know? Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, so it sounds like you have maybe, I don't know, an opinion or something about representation. Um, so, you know, like, just like you said, obviously representation comes from just things, media existing um, mm -hmm. from that perspective. So, you know, what are your thoughts on representation and how they can um, help build a culture of understanding? Um, I, so... In terms of like, uh, so I do have some concerns about feeling like the work of representation is, or the or the work of authors that are marginalized, right? And representing themselves that their work is in building understanding, although that is a, a an outcome, I think, of the work. I, you know, I, I think that there is a pressure on um, a lot of marginalized creators to be ones who are building understanding, right? And that's not really a fair pressure to put on the work. Because when you put that pressure on the work, then it's like, I have to explain myself, then my work has to be, um, it starts to play to another audience, right? And um, when I set out to do work, like I try to to push away thoughts of, you know, who's in the mainstream, how will mainstream readers, you know, think about this, um, you know, dominant culture, let's just say that I'm saying mainstream and being nicer. But, you know, when we think about like dominant culture, we're talking about white, non-Muslim culture, what do they think about what I have written here? And, and, and do they understand me and like me better now? Um, I try to push those thoughts away. I don't really want to write for them. When I, I write, I, I feel like I want to write for that Black Muslim child and what they understand and enjoy. And um, to a point where um, sometimes I do write as if I'm writing to a younger version of myself. And what, what you know, what story does that person want to read, you know, and, and just care about that. Um, and, you know, it's not my job to help other people to understand me, um, you know, necessarily. I, I think um, the representation is for us. It's for the people who need that representation. So it starts at that. At the heart of it, it starts at that. And I think sometimes a part of being marginalized is that people think the people who are from a dominant culture think that everything is for them. And I've had people talk to me about my work in that way. Well, white children need to read this book. 
I, yeah, I guess all children hopefully need to read this book. But I mean, it's not, I didn't write it specifically, particularly for them, you know, although I would hope that they can enjoy the book. I do write for all children. But it, you know, when I'm writing, I'm like, no, little Jamila needs this book. <laughs> you know what I mean, and, and, and that's what it is. So I, I think, um, and I think a lot of times Muslim communities, we get wrapped up in wanting to be understood. And um, it, it creates a subservient sort of, uh, like, it, it makes us feel subservient, right? It creates like this, you know, belief about ourselves that we need to serve other populations and we need to convince them that we are uh, worthy, that we are human, that we're good enough, that we are, you know, we're, you know, we're not these different things. And it really affects our work in negative ways. And, and I think we need to let go of that pressure. If people want to misunderstand us, they're going to misunderstand us because they have an agenda and they will find the things to prove whatever they want to prove. If people are coming to the work with an openness, uh, you know, then they, then this will build understanding. It will be an outcome, but it shouldn't be that that is my intention in going into the work that I need to help you to build understanding of me. Right, exactly. Very good point. Um, so where does your inspiration for these stories come from and why do you enjoy specifically writing for children? Uh, my inspiration comes from life. Um, so it's either stuff that's happened to me or stuff that I've observed. Um, I've worked as an educator. I have kids. So they give me so much. Those things just give me so much um, fodder, so much inspiration, so much work. Sometimes even like a picture, an image. Um, something that someone says, it just sparks the ideas for me. Like I, it, that's one thing that, um, you know, has been a blessing so far is that I'm never really like grasping for ideas. There's always like, oh, that's an idea. Oh, that's an idea. And it's more so me trying to filter through the ideas and figure out which ones are going to work. Um, and I forgot your second, the second part of your question. Why do you enjoy um, specifically writing oh. for children? And then I and I enjoy writing for children. It really is kind of therapeutic. I think younger Jamila did need those stories, um, and I didn't realize how much. Um, and uh, being able to recreate, to kind of create that uh, literature is just really pleasurable. I did start writing um, for children f just because I wanted to write, see more of those kinds of books with that representation for my own kids. Um, but then it became after a while, no, it's really, it's, it, this is kind of a selfish pleasure and it's okay. Um, that I, I do, um, I do take pleasure in being able to write stories that affirm that inner child and that let me play around with that inner child. And I think writing as, with the voice of a child, is just, it's, it is therapeutic. It is, it's very, it's, it's a pleasure. It's fun in a way that other kinds of writing just isn't as much fun for me. I love writing other kinds of things, but writing from the voice of a child, I just immediately kind of get that smile on my face and 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 I feel like I'm in that kid space again. Right. Um, and then so specifically with your latest book that's about to come out um, early next year, Salat and Secret, uh, what was the inspiration for that? So that one, um, there were actually two different things happening in my life that kind of um, came together um, to inspire that book. Um, one was when I started writing the book, my father had passed just a couple of weeks prior to that. Um, you know, and you know, mercy, Allah's mercy be upon him. And um, he, he was somebody growing up who loved, um, who, who I mean, he really loved being a Muslim and um, really taught me you know, pride in Islam and he worked odd jobs. So he, he worked as like a cab driver. He worked as an ice cream truck, um, ice cream man. He, he always, he was driving, you know, delivering things, you know, courier. He did all kinds of work like that. And, you know, often in those kind in that kind of work, you know, he might not be close to a place to pray. And so he was very unabashed about, you know, going and finding places to pray. And also there were just stories of people uh, in his, in that sort of, you know, um, in his, his co you know, people he worked around who also, they're very much um, people who, you know, would 
you know, take out a prayer rug and, and pray on the sidewalk, you know, if they needed to, you know, and they had different experiences with that, you know. Um, and so that was one experience that kind of inspired the story and you know, thinking about, you know, having that parent and sometimes feeling embarrassed about that. Um, you know, just sort of like, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're praying outside and there are people walking by. Um, and then um, to, it was also in a period where in about a couple weeks, um, my son, youngest son was becoming seven and I was thinking about buying him um, a Salat rug um, to kind of, you know, celebrate sort of the idea that, well, he's seven and this is kind of the stage where you tell a kid, you know, you need to start praying your five daily prayers. And um, so I was thinking about that and um, then it's just kind of how excited my dad might be about that. And um, it it uh, it all came together into this story of this little boy who, you know, in the beginning of the story, he turned seven and his dad, ice cream man, dad gives him a slot rug and the little boy's so excited about this prayer rug that he gets Um and his dad is like very, you know, again, somebody who prays anywhere in public, but the little boy is shy. And so um, he is, um, you know, wanting to pray all five daily prayers, but he's too scared to ask for a place to pray during the school day. So he is sneaking around uh, trying to find secret places to pray in his school. So um, so that, and, and, and I mean, I think every, a lot of Muslims have had this experience, the people who are observant about their prayer, you know, trying to find a place to pray right and trying to be secretive and, and so that all kind of came together in this in the story of you know little muhammad who is sneaking around trying to find a place to pray um you know and his ice cream um his dad who's an ice cream man who who prays very publicly on the sidewalk <laughs> that's very sweet um and then so through all of your books um what kind of values or lessons do you hope are coming across to children and parents um, I think there is a thread in all of my books um, where it's it's kind of like loving, w wanting children to love who they are um, and love all of who they are and just like be very, very, uh, you know, unapologetic about it. You know, like you are who you are, love all of you. Um, you know, so I think that that continues throughout. There's always, somehow it always shows up in the books that, you know, that it, there is a real push for loving who they are, their, their, their identities and who they are, even when the stories aren't really about identity necessarily, so. Um, and is that the biggest takeaway you hope for, just to have somewhere to put their identity or are there other kinds of lessons? Oh yeah, I mean, there are all, there are all kinds of lessons, um, things like, you know, advocating for yourself, I mean, but that's sort of a, an identity thing, right? Um, you know, things like, uh, friendship um there are stories that are coming out that haven't been out uh, that aren't yet out yet but um that doesn't make sense i said that redundant but um there are stories that i have coming out that are about friendship a lot so a lot of focus on you know how uh, communicating with each other and misunderstandings and, and trying um trying to make that right but um you know ultimately yeah that's like a thread if you if you wanted to say like what is a message like it is really about um, figuring out, you know, I, I think I just love little kids and I want them to love themselves. You know what I mean? Like I, that, that's, I built my career around working with children, working with youth. And, and, and it's always very important to me to be like, you know what, who, who you are is beautiful. Who you are is good. And so I want you to feel that in, in my books every time. Yeah. And then, uh, what has been the highlight of your career? Uh, I think the highlight Wow. There's, there have been a number of them. So it's kind of, you know, um, it, it really comes from a lot of the um, schools and students, um, you, you know, just, uh, you know, people like celebrating the books. Um, so I'm, I'm going to pick one that seems kind of small, but I, I just, this one always tickles me. And um you know how kids have to dress up as uh, characters, book characters for school. I always love it when I see, um, you know, the, the little kid dressed as one of my characters. You know, the first one, the first time I saw a picture of, the, of a girl uh, 
dressed as the the girl on the cover of Mommy's Kimar, you know, a little black Muslim girl. Um, and, um, you know, I also just, someone recently sent me a photo of someone dressed like uh, the girl on your, in your name is a song. And it's just, it's, it feels so much real, more real, right. To see like kids, like they are reading, I don't, you know, I might not even know these kids. Right. And they are reading my books in different places in the country, around the world. And it appealed to them so much that, you know, they're going to come dressed as a character, you know, from my book, you know, and, and, you know, with corduroy and, you know, all of these different, you know, common characters that we hear about, you know, but they're going to come dressed as, you know, a character that I created um, from my from my brain. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Well, also related to children's literature, the Mindful Muslim Reader website was developed by mothers who wanted to ensure their children were engaging with books that would reflect their Islamic values. One of the founding members, Miriam Chikaku, tells our reporter Hadiya Spalich just how they built their list of recommendations and how they're empowering parents and children alike. Okay, so you said um, how the book selection process works? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a great question. So there's um, right now the four, um, the four members of our team are all um, readers uh, for the website. And when we see a book that we like, we ask, um, we, uh, we read it cover to cover. Um, I think that's one of the things that, um, people really uh, appreciate about, um, our website is that they, they're kind of assured that we've read it like, and, and looked at all the pictures and everything. So what we're looking for is books that really, um, uh, kind of build a child's uh, moral imagination. Um, and, and what that, you know, kind of a big word, but what it means is that it kind of inculcates in them, um, the good values and good character. Um, that's kind of the, the main goal. Um, and they're not necessarily books like, um, what we call Muslim books, like written by Muslims or about uh, Muslim characters and Muslim storylines. They can be classics, like we have The Hobbit, um, more, you know, modern books like Aragon, dra you know, like dragon fantasy series. Um, so what we're looking for is, um, virtue in the book. So, um, you know, does it um, help my child have good moral character um, in accordance with, um, you know, our tradition, Islamic tradition? So um, once we read the book, um, we rate it in four categories. And so um, you mentioned the four specific elements, virtue, language, um, story and beauty. Why did you guys decide to choose those specifically to rate your books and base them around? Yeah, so it was a long, like, it took us uh, many months, actually, of uh, wh what we did is, you know, we just started looking at books, like, okay, what, what would be important to parents? So, um, virtue, what I talked about is just the, kind of the reason that we're, we have the website, um, you know, is this building good character for my children? Um, language, because, uh, you know, in recent decades, um, the quality of the language that we speak, that we hear, um, that we read has really declined, um, you know, and this is shown through a lot of different studies um, of just like what the average reader um, is used to in terms of vocabulary or like sentence, complicated sentence structures. It's kind of uh, declining even what they're teaching in schools, um, you know, from like our uh, few generations ago, even till now, um, there's a stark difference. So what we wanted to do with the language is kind of bring that back because language is so important in um, in our tradition you know, having good language, having good grammar, um, to be able to speak clearly, express yourself clearly and understand what others are saying. Um, it's, it's such an important part of our, our tradition that has, is, um, you know, being lost by like, uh, just always speaking in, in very modern language and very slangy language. So at least in, in books, if you're reading good language, you, you absorb that and it comes, becomes kind of part of who you are. So that's why we chose language. Story is just, you know, of course, any book. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter how good your language is or how high your morals are. If you don't have a good story to pull in the reader and the child, you can't get the message across. So story was kind of the basic one. And beauty was um, kind of the one that was really important to us um, in terms of just elevating what we're looking at, what our children are looking at, um, what becomes part of them. Like when you when you see, when you you you, you become what you, ref you reflect what you see. So what you're exposed to, what you consume. So if you're consuming 
um, and, and reading and taking in something of beauty, um, it, it becomes kind of part of who you are. So uh, but it's also part of our tradition, you know, um, in all of the traditional Muslim cultures, uh, uh, we have Islamic art and we have, um, you know, that idea of doing things with Hassan, with excellence, um, as the highest level of, of doing something. So um, we're hoping our website also, like, kind of reflects that aesthetic of um, clean and simple and beautiful. Um, so that was really important to us. What do you wish was more or at least better addressed in children's literature? And what is something that you think is oh, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so... You know, some of the, the trends we're noticing in children's literature is really like um, disrespect for elders. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of a, a modern trend across um, uh, across uh, the board. Um, and, and the idea that, um, you know, like uh, the idea that, you, you know, you're only like you're only responsible for yourself, um, that there is a decline in the idea of like responsibility for your family, for your parents, for your community, um, you know, service. Uh, we, we see, we're seeing a decline in those kind of ideas in books, um, especially the ones for like young teens, like YA, uh, genre. Um, sometimes they're just overly filled with the gory violence. Um, we have books that are violent, like, Lord, Lord, you know, um, The Hobbit, um, we're gonna, you know, put The Lord of the Rings on there pretty soon. Um, but like, you know, books are, are filled with unnecessary, like, gory details with no purpose other than just to be gory. Um, we're seeing a lot of that. So, you know, there is a, there's a place like, uh, you know, especially for boys, um, they like sword fights and, you know, dragons and, and, you know, even war, um, which we're totally okay with. Um, but the idea that, uh, you know, you're, you kind of have to protect the heart of a child. Um, so we're seeing all those things. So we really look for books, especially in that like that young teen genre that shows like, oh, like this is a young teen who is respectful to their parents, um, who takes care of their elders, uh, who serves the community is not uh, completely absorbed in their own self, um, which is, you know, some of the trends that we're seeing that's um, disheartening in children's literature. So we're trying to recommend books that um, are going opposing those trends. Well, thanks for joining us this week. From me and the team, Hadia Spalic and Maya Gela. thanks so much. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at American Muslim Today. And if you'd like to read more about this story and access more digital content, feel free to check out our website, AmericanMuslimToday.com. We'll see you next week on The Muslim Viewpoint.